bit of news to get through and distressing for myself being a Manchester United fan. The transfer window is now closed, right? The transfer window came to a grinding halt yesterday, what, evening at about 11 p.m. All transfers um, pertaining to teams within the European leagues had to be concluded at 11 p.m. Monday. And um, yeah, United um, at the beginning of the window probably needed four players especially off the back of the then fast forward off the back of the Tottenham loss you would say we probably needed six so it was paramount that we filled in some positions such as right wing such as centre midfield such as striker but then considering that the collapse that we faced in front of Tottenham you would have assumed that our coaching staff would have thought it would paramount to sign a centre back or two in order to provide the cover or the competition needed in order for us to have a some sort of solid uh, defence or some sort of defence that was capable of withstanding some you know constant attacks from the opposition side but unfortunately that didn't happen instead what we were presented from the Man United hierarchy was the signings of Edson Cavani, Alex Tellez, Facundo Pelestiri and Amar Diallo. Now, if you're not a fan of football, you might say to yourself, hey, Casino, why are you complaining? Th those are all names of players that are pretty good, aren't they? Yes, but when you get into the details, it makes it very distressing. Well, number one, Edison Cavani here, the first player, has been with our club for eight months or eight to seven months. He's been a free agent. He's released from Paris Saint-Germain, the club here that he's wearing the jersey of. And since then, he hasn't played football. He hasn't kicked a ball in eight months. Yes, he's been keeping himself fit, you know, doing a bit of ballet, horseback riding, whatever Argentinians do. Great. But he hasn't been playing football for eight months. Plus, he's 33 years old. We're not signing one of the premier strikers at his pomp, which would have been, what, 2016, 2017 season. We're signing a striker who is pretty past his best, who a striker that they didn't want to keep a hold at PSG, a striker who they would have rather, imagine, think about this, PSG wanted, would rather let go of Edison Cavani and sign Chipper Moteng and Mario Icardi instead of this guy right and you would you would think to yourself even a half fit even a half firing um edson cavani is a far better option than picking triple moteng or mario cardi but no they still persisted with picking those two players instead of edson cavani so warning signs there alex tellers a, a left back we've needed since the beginning of the window i've not got no complaints about him um porto's captain 27 years old um extremely experienced he's played hundreds of games many assists many goals he's got more assists and more goals that luke shaw could ever dream of having i think luke shaw's current stats are like seven assists over seven years alex tellers has you know near on double digits um assists only in the season just gone and i think this season he's got a couple already underneath his belt so you know we're getting a brilliant player there the only problem i'd have with it is maybe him bring brazilian brazilians usually don't Brazilians sometimes are a bit hit and miss in terms of settling in the uk but the fact that we've got fred uh playing here and we've got obviously fernandino playing on the other side for man city i'm pretty sure he'll be fine in terms of settling down then you move on to this kid here facundo pelestiri some 18 year old kid we bought from uruguay who i'm assuming we bought as a backhand um what favor to whoever organized the edson cavani deal because i don't understand why we'd pick him um he looking from the highlights i've seen online he looks pretty terrible um for the most part he, he looks no better than the players that we already have in our academy or the players that we have already let go to go on loan most notably what's his face has gone to Wolfsburg and then secondly or lastly we've got the most exciting signing unfortunately who's only going to join us in January Amadou Diallo um, 18 year old winger who plays at Atalanta at the moment from uh, Ivory Coast he looks incredible in the highlights he actually looks like he's got something about him um, he's been spoken about very highly um, within the Atalanta ranks they've got a great youth system there but I say he's one of their best um, exports from that um, youth system that they've got set up there but again because of work um, permit stipulations he's only able to join us in January and we spent guess what 38 million on this kid too for 37 and a half something along those lines <clears throat> which makes you your brain hurt because you think to yourself cool united signed an 18 year old right who's gonna become quite possibly let's say he might become the next usman dembele right he might become that next great superstar on the wing sans the injuries but he cost us 38 million pounds 38 million and we'll and we were you know playing hardball over 20 mil when it comes to Borussia Dortmund to sign in Jadon Sancho. Oh, and again, as you get, just in case you forgot, or just in case you were wondering, we didn't sign Jadon Sancho. You know that guy we've been chasing for 18 months? 
chasing you know that guy we were pursuing you know that guy we pinned all our hopes on you know that guy who i'm sure the man united um marketing team and social media team had prepared loads of graphic um you know artwork pieces that they were going to promote out there loads of pieces in terms of promo and advertising you know that guy we didn't get him in the end guess why because the club that we were buying in from Borussia Dortmund are run by proper football people they told us the deadline was august what was it 24th they told us if we didn't make a bid that would match their obviously um, asking price for Jaden Sancho that he wasn't going to go anywhere. And guess what big clubs do? Big clubs that put, you know, put out these kind of statements, big clubs who obviously um, have the aspirations of becoming a great club, right? Big clubs who are known for producing amazing talent. They have their asking price. You meet the asking price, you get the player. You don't, you don't get him. It's as simple as that. Because you know what? Next season, there'll be a whole host of other clubs coming up, lining up, ready and willing to part the money in order to get his signature secured. What an absolute shit show. And then you make, to make it even more depressing, this tweet here from the account Main Night HQ details exactly how little we've spent in the transfer window, considering our lackluster performance last season, especially towards the end. We got third place in Premier League, but we didn't get it by merit. We only got it because everyone else had plodded around us and we literally dragged ourselves, kicking and screaming, right? Dragged ourselves with our, with our arms, right? Our legs up were completely shot, completely spent for, and we dragged ourselves, crawled ourselves over the line, over Bob Raya, over IEDs, and we just about secured third place but it wasn't it wasn't an easy third place finish it was a very difficult third place finish and considering that the other teams that finished behind us are outspending us such as the team like Chelsea as I got here on the screen Chelsea spent 212 million net this season in order to overtake us and to you know potentially challenge for the title or to of course you know have a good run in the Champions League Aston Villa who nearly got relegated spent 85 million Leeds, who were promoted, spent 84 million. Manchester City, who finished second, spent 76. Arsenal, who finished behind us in fourth place, um, or in fifth place, fourth or fourth, I forgot where they finished, 64 million. Everton, 63 million. Everton Football Club spent 63 mil. 63. Sheffield, Sheffield United, 53. Tottenham Hotspur, 50 million. A notoriously tight Tottenham Hotspur, and Tottenham Hotspur run by Daniel Levy, who doesn't muck around. He's not somebody that's really loose with the purse strings, right? He he holds those things tight. Tottenham, Liverpool, forty eight, and then Manchester United. We spent we spent just a, just above what Newcastle spent at thirty five million. We spent thirty six point four mil, and we finished second by the skin of our teeth. And the other thing that people would forget as well that makes this really difficult to stomach the shocking transfer activity the fact that we're going to hand Edson Cavani the number seven shirt after all this dick teasing we've been doing with Jaden Sancho the most frustrating factor about all this is the fact that fair enough we don't want to spend too much money but we have only got a social dog in charge a manager who's basically proven to us as fans in my opinion because I don't rate him as a coach one bit but let's give him this let's give him the benefit of doubt he has he has basically he has basically illustrated or you know told us in non certain terms, as long as he has good players, he can he thinks he can get a tune out of good players. If he doesn't have good players, he's pretty useless. He can't improve um, average players. He can't improve good players. But given a bunch of world class players, and he probably might be able to do a thing. Sprinkle a couple of youth team members in there. You um you know um some kids that graduated from the academy, and you'll probably be able to do a job. But he needs to be backed in order to be successful at this club. If he's not backed, he can't be successful. And the issue that I have, especially with some of the fans out there, who complain that oh we should back our manager, back Solskjaer, is that look, let's look at it this way. We're never going to get rid of the Glazers. We're never going to get rid of Edward Wood, right? The Glazers have been sucking Man United dry, you know, only taking money out, never investing their own money into the success or the pursuit of trophies in Manchester United. Edward Wood has, has kind of proceeded over failed manager after failed manager. And his position is never in question. He's, he's, his job is never under threat. He's never going to rel relinquish any kind of power or control in his position either. The director of football uh, position that we were promised would get filled has never been fulfilled. And we are there, you know, languaging um, in the past, trying to operate with this kind of really old draconian system, or not even an old system, a system that doesn't make any sense, where we send lawyers to go and secure footballing contracts of some of the most prestigious clubs in the world. Makes no sense. Now, 
if that's the case and Man United board are clearly telling us that they want that they don't want to spend any money, that they'd rather the manager, whoever's in place, get consistently get fourth place. Similar to what Arsenal Wenger did at Arsenal towards the end. They don't want to give him any more money. They just want him to qualify for the Champions League season in, season out, keep the money coming in and keep it moving. If that's the case, get a manager who can do better with average players. Get a manager who can do better with a limited um transfer budget. Get that sort of manager. Because at the moment, if you try and get Ole Gunnar Solskjaer can try and ask him to construct a team or to um, uh, allow us to implement a system, a style of play that can bring the best out of McTominay, Fred, Matic, Pogba, Bruno Fernandes and all these other people that play in midfield, he's not going to be able to do it. He's going to do what he's done consistently and just pick the best players for each position or whoever's performing the best at the time. But it doesn't necessarily mean they work the best for the team. So now we're just back to square one. Now we have more individuals in Edison Cavani. Does he actually benefit our team? Does he actually um, take us anywhere forward? Probably not, I would say. For as big as a player as he is, just look at his goals. I've watched him play for Paris Saint-Germain, you know, for many, many seasons. But just watch his highlights. You'll see most of his finishes come from balls that get thread through the lines. Balls that get crossed into the box. Balls that get dinked over the top of the defense that he can run onto. So he may look like Zan Ibrahimovic in stature. He may have like that Andy Carroll physique, but he doesn't play with his back to goal. He doesn't pin defenders back and chest it and bring other midfielders in. He finishes transitions. He finishes passages of play, or he sometimes can provide assists inside the area. But most of his football comes in and around the box, running in behind, similar to what Martial does. But we don't even do that enough. Martial usually has to rely on individual moments of brilliance, whether it's from Bruno Fernandes or Pogba, getting the ball to his feet, in and around the box, and he drives in and finishes it. Or like Rashford did the other day, that Bruno Fernandes somehow got an assist for that, where he essentially picked up the ball from, you know, from the left wing, beat two men, fating to shoot, cut it on his left foot and smash it top corner, and still I was giving an assist to Bruno Fernandes. I'd say ridiculous. But that aside, we don't even play to his kind of strengths. Then on the other side, okay, let's 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 say we play him because Marshall's injured or Marshall, sorry, suspended now for three games. Then you've got Alex Tellers playing on the left hand side, a, a very very good le- a very very good left back, super attacking, but he's gonna need help coming back. He can't have he can't be just rem- rem- uh, marauding up and down the flank on his own. He's gonna need Rashford or Martial or Greenwood, whoever's playing on that side, Dan James to come back and cover him sometime when he's marauding upwards, and then he's gonna cross a ball into the box to no one's ahead because we don't have enough bodies going into the area when we're attacking in that way, because we play with a double pivot. And because Pogba's playing too far back, and because Matic doesn't have the legs to cover the the pitch in general, we have such a mismatch of players. And let's say, for instance, it goes well. We have Alex Tellers whipping in balls, getting great assists, but then we're going to be so left heavy that teams are going to figure out if they just stop our left-hand side, we're basically null and null and void. Because if you switch it to um, AWB, it's over. We're not going to attack on the right-hand side whatsoever. It's not going to happen. Not in the same way that we would attack on the left-hand side. So again, it it does kind of point to me, in my own opinion, that maybe this is either a understanding from the club that we're too far back to try and catch up now in terms of transfers. Transfers are never going to change the fundamental issues that we have with our recruitment, that we have with our coaching staff, that we have with our mentality, and that we're just going to have to let this play out. Or... The, the board have recognised that Ole Gunnar Solskjaer isn't necessarily the manager to take us to the next level. Or just the manager even just to evolve this team that he's successfully put together. He can't necessarily take it to the next level. He he was very, he did, a, he did amazingly during that interim period, right? He was the perfect man for the job at that time. Ole, uh, Mourinho was a tyrant. Mourinho tried to run out Martial. He tried to run out Pogba. He was no, not well liked by some of the more popular figures, let's say, in the changing room. He was obviously going through whatever he was going through as a coach. He probably had a bit of a weird moment where he didn't really understand, which I can understand um, Mourinho's annoy, uh, being annoyed at our squad, right? Imagine Mourinho coming into the Manchester United dressing room, looking around the dressing room and thinking there's not many good players here. And then those same good players who are pretty average are the ones giving him the most resistance. That can be very frustrating in the same way that it was frustrating when he went to the Real Madrid change room and they didn't really respect him that much, even though he'd won all these trophies that he'd won. <clears throat> he couldn't go in there and sort of big time them. I think the same thing happened at United. He probably went in there and thought, how the hell is Luke Shaw giving me any stick? Who's he to like not respond to my coaching technique? Who's Paul Pogba who hasn't done nothing in, you know, three and a half seasons since he's been here? They want to give me pushback. 
he has to what he has to play only. The only way he Paul Pogba can, can can play to his level is if he has the perfect scenario, the perfect players in and around him in order to perform. Like I can definitely see his what his anointment was, and then when you get someone like an Oligan Solskjaer coming in, who's not going to criticize the players, who's not going to go after the board, um, who's not going to um who's not going to be a negative influence around changing ground. I see why they were so excited by him. But in terms of pure coaching ability, in terms of being able to put a team together, uh, implement a system, um, put the right combination together over the pitch, in terms of who plays where, in what position, be able to be adaptable with his technique, with his ta- with tactics, um, you know, his ability to change the game with substitutions. The only thing I can really say that he actually smashed for real was his player recruitment. But then you'd have to also say his player recruitment did also um, was responsible for vetoing the signings of Harry Maguire for 80 million and AWB for 50. So that makes you think, you know, if you're going to pin your hopes on because those two signings don't make any sense looking at it now, they both can't play out from the back. But then you want to play out from the back with those two players. Why would you sign them? Because if you're just signing, you know, if we if we were a team with a low block, and we want to just, you know, um, rebuff the attacks of the opposition side and then spring attacks when we can with just our midfield and our attack carrying the ball forward. Fair enough. You get AWB and a Maguire involved because, you know, Maguire's got a pretty big kick on him. He can head the ball pretty far too. Um, AWB is really tenacious in a tackle. Makes complete sense. But if you're playing counter-attacking football and you need those two players to set off attacks or to start the transitions or to get the balls further up to the pitch, it makes no sense. It doesn't make any sense. So he has... TS takes some responsibility for the way that these guys have performed and the fact that they haven't fit in his system of play or style of play, which I don't even think he necessarily has. But he takes a lot of credit for obviously allowing Martial, Greenwood, and Rashford to thrive to a certain extent, even though Rashford has been a bit, you know, hot and cold um, as per lately. But God almighty, man, this is really making me think that, again, because I've heard rumors as well that United are obviously looking at or have sounded out Mauricio Pochettino in terms of taking over at United. And again, it's a quick fix, right? Because it's not going to fix some of our more inherent problems that we have with our team. Who knows? Mauricio might come in and also have the same issues that Solskjaer has, which let's not say may. Pochettino will have the same issues that Solskjaer had. Every manager that's come through that does United doors post Fergie has had the exact same issues, right? Um, lack of support from the board, uh, an over reliance on transfers to change results, and just you know short term view, no long term thinking in terms of getting us back to the top and what it actually takes in order for us to challenge for a title, challenge for a Champions League. These things are not being discussed at United. What's being discussed at United is who generates the most clicks, who gets the most shares, and who gets the most engagement. That's what it necessarily goes down there. So I'm sure for the people on the board, letting go of somebody like a Jadon Sancho was unacceptable. That's why we got such a big marquee sign like Edson Cavani because he's a legacy. He's a starlet, right? He's one of those kind of, he's a Galactico in the quintessential terms of it, right? But not obviously in terms of his worldwide, not in terms of his kind of skill level, but in terms of his brand, right? Edson Cavani is a well-known striker. You know, he has that image, um, the hair, the, you know, the build, blah, blah, the goals that he scored, um, the, the, the teams he's been a part of these are all things that are obviously going to um add to the amount of engagement you get on social media which is shocking to even say that right that a team as if as big as united is looking at players for their social media relevancy but that's where we are now at the moment so my opinion of course transfer windows are complete dud we completely flopped it um we didn't necessarily prepare well enough signing four players anyone deadline day is an indication that you're poorly prepared you should never be doing it even if they're young players you should secure the signings way ahead of time um the fact that now we've only been left with an edson cavani and an alex tellers and, pres- and and presumably um we're going to get that facundo Pelis Pel- 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 Pellistrilli kid in but supposedly he's going to be starting for the under 21s or under 23s it's just a complete shocking state of affairs and the only saving grace I can say is that eventually Ole Gunnar Solskjaer will lose his job because he's not a great manager or not a great coach and we will finally get a coach in Mauricio Pochettino who has clearly demonstrated his ability to improve pretty average teams pretty average players to perform at the highest level he did it with Southampton he did it with Tottenham consistently and I'm sure he will do it with United I will just hope that if Solskjaer gets sacked, Edward has to leave his post or has to relinquish some control and give it to the director of football. There is no way that we can continue repeating the mistakes of before and hoping for a different outcome. That is a definition of crazy and that is Stratford Red Devils talk with me, Agostino.